Battle number five then from the 2018 SQA Advanced Higher Mathematics of Mechanics. Five bars here, conical pendulum. You have to derive the formula for the angular velocity. Well, what does it say? There's a body of mass M attached to one end of a light inextensible string, so there's no stretching up, of length L. I may put in afterwards. It's spun in a horizontal circle, so the path of the string forms a conical pendulum, blah, blah. Given the length of the string is double the radius, and we'll need that because we need this angle. So this angle will come from this triangle, where this length is double that length. The length is double the radius, so that means whatever the radius, that's twice it. You recognise that angle, that triangle straight away. Right, to drive this formula. Well, what are the forces acting with that mass? There's its weight, and there's the tension in the string. Now straight away, the vertical forces can be balanced because there are components in both directions, which means it shouldn't be sinking down. However, the weight's got no component in the x direction, so there's an unbalanced force going this way. And in the static case, that unbalanced force would cause that mass to swing into the centre line. However, because it's been given an initial tangential velocity, what that unbalanced force will do instead is to keep deflecting it and pulling it in towards the centre, forcing it to go into a circle. It's going to be a centripetal force. Anyway, what are the forces? Some of the forces in the y direction. You've got T. Now the component of T up the way, if I just draw this little T triangle again, here's T, and I'll put in the two components in this part. There's a component that way and a component that way. Alternate angles, that's theta, and that's T. So the vertical component next to the angle will be cos. So that's going to be T cos theta minus, because that's going down the way, <coughs> mg. They're balanced, so they come to zero. So there's an equation then involving all the variables. T cos theta equals mg. Equation one and the first mark. Now what about the sum of the forces in the x direction? Well, there's only the one. This component here this negative T sine theta. That's the only component there, and that's going to produce an acceleration in this direction. So if I'm calling that the acceleration, that's also negative. That'll be negative MA. <clears throat> well, the negatives will cancel out. That gives me another equation. T cos theta equals M. But instead of A, I'll use the other form. That's omega squared r, m omega squared r. There's a second equation. And also your second mark. Pair of simultaneous equations. You can cancel out the t's and cancel out the m's by dividing those equations. What did I put that down for? By dividing those equations, the useful way to divide them would be to have 2 divided by 1, so that's all I'll do. If you do equation 2 divided by equation 1, you would have the t's would cancel, then the sine over the cos would make a tan, the m's would cancel, and be left with omega squared r upon g. Dealing with the simultaneous equations by dividing them gives you this mark. Now it's just a case of what's tan theta. Well, you should recognise that triangle. With the 1 and the 2, you could do that if you liked. The sine of it is a half, so it's 30. You could recognise that. That's the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which means the tangent of that angle, the tangent of theta is 1 upon root 3. So popping that in there. 1 upon root 3 is omega squared r upon g. That gives you a mark. Now the only thing left is to rearrange that. And remember, of course, that r was equal to a half of L. So omega squared R would equal the G will go on top, the root 3 stays underneath, the R goes underneath, now that R was L, but divided by 2, so the 2 goes on top. I'll just push the G over a bit to put the number to the front, so 2G, and there it is, the final mark.